Hey, I'm Tom Platania with ProCalx University, and today we're talking about positive and negative pressure in your home. Now, a lot of homes end up being under a negative pressure, which is something we don't want. And the reason being, especially if you're in a hot, humid climate, is if the house is under a negative pressure, we are constantly pulling in that heat and humidity. Now, how are we doing that? Now think about it, all the penetrations that you have in your house from the windows and doors, um, from exhaust piping and different things of that nature, receptacles in the wall, you know, even though they're on the inside, if there's a gap inside there that goes in between the wall, it could go up into the attic and out by the soffits because let's face it, they're not always perfectly sealed. Um, and that's something that when you do a blower door test on a brand new house, you could even have that done on your existing home, it'll tell you how leaky your house is. Now for new construction homes today in Florida, the code is it has to be less than seven air changes uh, of, uh, of leakiness, which is the amount of air that exchanges per hour. But that's, that's a forced one. And, and that's something outside of what we're talking about today. But it's something that you can definitely look at. If you feel that your home is just extremely leaky, you can have a blower door test done and that'll help you determine how leaky it is. But, but today what we're talking about is, is the house being under a negative pressure where now, yes, when you turn the exhaust fan on in the bathroom, yes, you're going to pull air out and, and put it outside. So it's going to be under negative, but that's only temporary. Or when we go in the kitchen, we turn the exhaust fan on. Well, that's a temporary. We're not talking about that. We understand that that's going to happen. You know, uh, you know, Uncle Joey after Chili Tuesdays, you know, we want that fan to work properly, right? Or we're cooking something in the kitchen and we want to get all that smell and that grease out, you know, so it doesn't stay in the house. We want to put that exhaust fan on. But what we're talking about today is just as your house sits normally, without any fans or anything on, without the doors and windows open, just the house as it is. And being under a negative pressure can cause a lot of those issues, a lot a, a, amongst other issues it can cause besides the, the heat and humidity coming in. Now, what we want to do is, is first, we're going to be able to figure out, is my house under positive or negative? And, and a really quick kind of a way that you can do this is if you go, make sure all the other doors and windows are closed and go to, let's say your front door, and you could pretty much do this on any exterior door, but go to front door and slightly crack the door open while you have your face really close to the door, to that little crack. And when you put your face there and open that, do you feel a rush of air coming at your face or do you feel it pushing away? If you feel it coming at your face, that means your house is under a negative pressure. And that means that when that door is closed, the air is going to find any place else it can, any crack and crevice to pull that heat and humidity or wherever you live to pull that into the home, you know, and, and we do a lot of things to our homes to make them a little tighter to help keep that outside environment out. If we're in a very cold environment, we don't want to bring that cold air in if we're trying to heat the house. Um, we want to be able to slightly pressurize the house, one, so that we're keeping those outside contaminants and, and environment out, but also we want to keep a slight positive pressure so that we're not pulling in that stuff um, in, into the home and that we're also pushing the contaminants that are in home. We have a lot of contaminants in our home. We have dust and dander and particles and smells and all kinds of things that we can help force some of those outside as well without having devices like an ERV, energy recovery ventilator, which actually purposely forces air out and brings in fresh air. So you have that constant exchange. That's something for a different topic, a different conversation. So that's one way that you can determine if the house is under a negative or positive pressure. You know, something else you can do is we have a smoke pen. If you go to theprocalcstore.com, there's a little smoke pen that you can get there. And you take that smoke pen and you can go around the windows or doors when they're closed and you can tell by if the smoke gets pulled in to the door or if it gets blown back at you, whether it's under a negative or positive pressure. That also tell you if there's a leak somewhere. You do this around window. That's a really big help. Uh, we talked about that in one of our other videos. So 
first determining whether the house is under a negative or a positive. And we want to try to get a slight positive. Um, and how do we do that? Well, when all the fans aren't running, um, a slight positive pressure a lot of times can be created from the air conditioning system. And what we're doing is we, and I'll have a little, a little graph over here for you, but what we're doing is the air handler, the air conditioning system or furnace is going to be pushing out air and it's going to be pulling air. And you would think to yourself, okay, Tom, well, wait a minute. If, if, I'm, if the air conditioner is in the house and it's pulling air from the house, isn't it going to be blowing the same amount of air out? No, not, not necessarily. And how does that happen? So let's show you a little thing over here. All right, so this is right off. This is the software that we use to do our load calculations. I just drew up a little house here. And let's say that the supply air coming out of the air handler furnace is 1,000 CFMs, cubic feet per minute. So I got 1,000. Well, if, if, if I'm pushing 1,000 into the house, obviously, if the return's in the house, it should be pulling 1,000 too. Okay, so we got an even number. But depending on how much duct work you have in the return, and depending on how much duct work you have in the supply, if they are leaking and they're in the attic, you could be losing. So let's start off with the supply. So let's say the return is 1,000 CFMs. It's, it's right at the air handler. It's in a closet. There's no duct work. It's pulling 1,000 CFMs right in. Then it goes through the air handler. It goes up into the duct work, and all the duct work's in the attic. Well, as the air goes through the ductwork, there's leaks in the ductwork. There's cracks, there's gaps, there's fittings that aren't tight, and some of that air starts to leak out. So by the time you measure all the air actually coming out of the vents, the air that's in the house itself, let's move this over here, is only 800. So now we're sucking more air out of the house than we're putting back in it. And we create a negative pressure because the air is going into the attic. So it's not actually going into the conditioned home. So we're pulling out 1,000 CFMs, but we're only blowing 800 CFMs back in. So we are purposely forcing the house to be under a negative pressure. Now let's flip this around, which this, this isn't as bad, but it still has issues. Let's say that we flip these numbers around, that our return is only showing 800 CFMs that it's pulling in because the return has a lot of ductwork. It's going to all the bedrooms. There's all this ductwork coming back. And when I physically measure the air at the grills or the air at the air handler, because it sucked so much air out of the attic because the ductwork has leaks in it, holes and gaps. So it's not pulling a thousand CFMs out of the house. Maybe it's only pulling 800 CFMs of air out of the house, but it's pulling the other 200 CFMs out of the attic. So now we have 800. So now we have more supply air going back into the house and less return. You say, okay, well, Tom, isn't that what we want? Because now we're positively pressurizing the house. But here's the issue. If I'm pulling in attic air from all the cracks and crevices, what's in the attic? Unless you have isonine where you're foaming the roof deck and, and you're just using ceiling insulation, I am pulling into my house outside, humid, depending on the location, outside air, and I'm bringing that right into my home, which completely changes the whole mechanics of your AC system. So even though we put it under a positive pressure because we have less return than supply, we're doing it in the wrong way um, because now we're pulling in all that nasty attic air. We don't want that. We want it to be perfectly sealed. Again, the, the people who usually will do blower door testing for your house typically also do duct leakage testing. And I strongly recommend that you have, and it's usually not that expensive. If you do the blower door test, they don't charge that much extra to do the duct leakage test. But if not, you can come out and have someone just do the duct leakage test. Don't have somebody just do a visual inspection. Cracks can be very small. 
if they pressurize the duct system and sometimes they'll put a little bit of smoke into the duct system, harmless smoke, someone in the attic can go up there and look to where the smoke goes out of the ductwork and you'll be able to tell that that's where there's a leak in the supply and or return if you have that. Okay, so something very important that helps you determine that's usually one of the biggest factors. Now, there could be other ones. Maybe your exhaust fans don't have the right dampers on them. So when the exhaust fan is not working, there should be a damper that closes that blocks off the air from coming in or getting out. And we want to stop that. So make sure that your exhaust fans, your kitchen exhaust fan, um, your, your bathroom exhaust fans and whatnot have those dampers in them that seal, not just these cheap, because somebody will go in and get these cheap bathroom vent fans and they have these dampers. But when you look at it, it's got this huge 16th of an inch gap all the way around the damper, which is still allowing air to go in and out. Uh, and we don't want that. We want there to be a nice tight seal. You might have to spend a few more dollars to get that, but we want that tight little seal. Um, so that's something that we want to look at. Now, here's something about the negative and positive pressure that we want to talk about. And it's not, it's something that when, when we're using our exhaust fan in the kitchen, nowadays we've noticed that a lot of your homes, people are buying these almost kitchen style, restaurant kitchen style exhaust fans, 1,000, 1,200 CFM exhaust, where they got these six, eight burner stoves and all this fancy stuff. And that's fine. But we're, if we're running these fans at full capacity, we are pulling so much air out of the house. And one of the misconceptions that we find a lot of times is that people are trying to run the outside air through the air conditioning system to make up for that negative positive pressure of that fan. Now, we'll do another video on this to get into a lot more detail, but that is not the case. You should never calculate for your exhaust fans or your big kitchen exhaust fan from the air conditioning system. The biggest reason is because those fans are always typically intermittent. You're only going to use it for a short period of time. And if you size the air conditioning system based on that additional exhaust, you're going to massively oversize your air conditioning system and you're going to cause all kinds of issues up to and including in humid locations like South Florida, Texas, you're going to cause mold and, and mildew and all kinds of other things. So let's, let's stop that. And we're going to have another video that talks about the details of kitchen exhaust fans and how you should properly, properly handle that. So let, let's go on to here. Now, one other issue that we come across quite frequently um, on the negative and positive pressure is people want to take their garages and turn them into a nice little living area or, or workspace or something. And they want to condition their garage, but they want to do it using the air conditioner from the house. Now I bring this up because let's think about this same concept that I just talked about. Okay. If I put air from here into the garage, I still have a return, my main return in the house, but I'm taking some of my supply and I'm dumping it into the garage. So it's the same concept as we have. We're now pulling more return air than we are supply air in the main house. And then I'm pushing air into the garage. So I'm going to now put my entire home under a negative pressure. Well, I know your next question. We'll just put a return in the garage, Tom. Can't do that. Well, one reason is if you were going to still bring cars and other motorized devices in there, you have the carbon monoxide and other hazardous materials that you store in your garage or that are going to be running in your garage. And you do not want that return to be pulling those contaminants into your enclosed house. And besides, it's completely against code. But we know a lot of homeowners take that code and just kind of push it off to the side and go, well, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And if I don't get caught, then I'm better off. They don't know what they're talking about. I know what I'm doing and I'm going to do it. Don't do it. You're going to put yourself and your family 
and your guests and everybody else at jeopardy by doing that. If you are ever going to air condition your garage, you need to do it with a completely separate air conditioning system. Yes, it's going to cost more. Um, and, and you're going to have to pay for it, but you are going to alleviate a lot of issues by doing this. Get yourself a little mini split unit. I mean, yeah, they cost a couple thousand dollars. You can even, depending on how big, you can go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get those little air conditioners that sit on the ground that plug into the wall. If, if you only need like a, a, a little one to cool a certain area, or if you're working in your workbench, you want to put that on. You could actually duck that out and put little ducts and vents in there to blow on you. But looking at using your air conditioner for your house, you're going to create the same issue for this as as we talked about earlier with leaks in the ductwork and whatnot, as you would if you were to condition your garage. So double check if your house is under a negative or positive pressure. We want, As an average, we want to keep the house under a slight positive pressure. So we're pushing all those contaminants and everything else out. We want to stop from continuously creating that negative pressure in the house, um, obviously temporarily with the exhaust fans, we're going to have it. But if you have any questions, uh, you know, you can put this in the comments down below. If you like the video, I'm trying to make the videos a little shorter. Um, it helps with editing, but also helps with retention. So we're going to do some of the classes, like we're going to have a course that's going to be probably four, five, six, seven, eight long. And it's going to be on how we gather information to do our load calculations and what the things are and how you as a homeowner, an HVAC company builder, whoever, if you're not sure how to do it, Besides, if you have the, if you don't have the plans of the house, we're going to talk about in that series on how to gather the information, how important that information is, and what we do to use that information to do the load calculations. Um, so again, put your comments down below if you have any comments about this this course here. If there's or if there's anything else that you want to look at or or us to do a video on, and don't forget to go to ProCalcsUniversity.com to see all the latest podcasts that we've done and go to the ProCalcsStore.com to see uh, some of the items that we have, filters and the smoke sticks that we talked about. And if you like this video, go ahead and click the subscribe button, click the like, give us a thumbs up, and let us know that you liked it for those, of course, the Google algorithms that they have. And uh, make sure you click that bell to receive notifications for all the future videos that we do. Uh, thank you. Happy New Year to everybody. God bless.